Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is like the 14th time I've tried to record the beginning of this video, and you will probably see me fail multiple times in a blooper video that it might be coming up soon or something. Anyway, in this video, we're going to continue with the drawing functions that we learned in the last video, and we're going to try and make a little world kind of editor thing for the, the small little game engine that we've been building. This is going to be very, very primitive. In fact, there are going to be no controls other than just drawing boxes. Super duper tiny, super duper small, and super duper easy. That's all it does. It just draws your platforms for you and keeps track of where they will all be. So. I'm going to actually make this pretty freaking huge. In fact, it's going to be 1200 by 700, so I can at least fit it on my computer monitor. Actually, I can fit it on a little bit bigger than that. I can probably go like 1900 and all that. But anyway, um, that's just fine for us. I am actually going to implement a clock this time, pygame.time.clock, and let's actually add a, a frames per second. I'll just call it FPS rather than typing all that out, because I'm feeling lazy today and stuff. Uh, let's import the colors so I don't have to grab any of that stuff from colors, import all that, and I don't need this white and uh, red garbage. Window.fill white, that's just fine, and we don't need any of this garbage here either. Okay, once we add it, actually add all that, um, we do want a few variables to keep track of what it is we should display on the screen. And uh, let's actually maintain all of this by uh, a list that actually knows what have we drawn and what have we already drawn and what should we keep. So I'm going to call that variable to draw, and right now, at the beginning of the program, it's just going to be an empty list. And we're going to want to have some variables that are keeping track of whether or not we are actually drawing right now. Like, if we have the mouse button pressed down, then we're still drawing. If we have the mouse button released, then, okay, we must have finished drawing. So, I'll call that variable something stupid, like draw start box. And right now that's going to be false, because obviously we're not drawing anything. Okay, so, then we have our event loop. We're actually testing if we've quit the program or not yet. Otherwise, let's look for some events that determine whether we've actually pressed the button down or not. So if the event.type is equal to mouse button down, I'm sure you guys know this from some other other uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, some <laughs> other videos and earlier videos. I just kind of choked on my words there and made a zombie sound that was probably not very pleasant to hear, sorry. But we'll keep track of the mouse coordinates. That's all that we're doing with this line of code. Pygame.mouse. The function to retrieve those is get POS or get POS. Get my posse, that sort of thing. Uh, if the event is actually being pressed down, if that's when we're actually still, like, you know, the moment that we've pressed the button. Press button down. Okay. So this one up here, I'm actually, I'm actually repeating my idea, sorry. Mouse button down is when we're actually pressing the button. We want the mouse position all the time, whenever we move the mouse. So this event should actually be, not be mouse button down, but instead mouse motion. I was uh, getting ahead of myself there, I'm sorry. In the case, though, that this is the mouse button down, position is equal to mouse position. And you're saying, WTF, John, why did you do that? Why are you keeping track of the variable that is already a variable? Well, position is going to stay the same, while mouse position is going to change, because we've moved the mouse in some cases. So we're just doing that so we can keep track of one instance. And that's when we actually start to draw. And the way we know that we're drawing is by saying draw start box is going to be true. Cool. Now let's test for the other events. If the event dot type you go to pygame dot mouse button down, but no, it should be mouse button up and uh, that sort of thing. That's when we can say, okay, the final position is now the mouse position that we're at because we've we stopped and all that. And we can say that the draw start box is now going to be false because we are all done drawing. You'll see this in, in, in motion. You'll see this actually make a bit more sense while we're programming and, and while the code is actually being run. So this is when we add, because we've finally finished drawing once we've released the mouse button, that's when we add something to repeatedly draw on the screen that we'll actually keep. That's when we can add, okay, a new object of the rect. And that's going to be um, to draw add new 
uh, list elements, which is the rect, pygame.rect, at its current position, or at least at the position that we started with, and then final position, zero, minus position zero. Now you might be wondering why we're actually subtracting and doing all this rather than just passing in final position as the other one. Well, keep in mind that the rect variable or the rect object is actually initial initialized with um, the arguments that determine its top left, that's that its top coordinate and its left coordinate, um, and the width and height. So when we when we subtract the final position by the first position, that's how we find the width and height. Simple, simple stuff. And actually, let's just have it display some information about these plot, th th about these objects and things that we've drawn. Sorry. Once we hit the enter key, and we can test that if event dot type is equal to pi game dot key down. Now let's do. Um, let's test if the event dot type is equal to pi game dot key return. And that's the uh, the constant for the enter key. And this way, we'll actually check. Okay, for each plot, uh, sorry, platform that we're drawing in our to draw variable or our list, then we can go ahead and print out. I'll put this in array syntax so we it, it's a bit more evident. Platform dot string. Platform dot split. Because remember, split is going. Uh, this the string of this platform is going to return it to us as a, as a tuple or as a tuple. However you want to say it, people yell at me for saying um, for saying tuple. And let's actually go from the first coordinate of that. Uh, I should be using like regular expressions or something to actually match this, but um, to, just for easeability, I'm going to go ahead and keep using the split command, split function. So we actually just get what's inside the tuple, but it would probably be much better to use the. Uh, it'd be much better to use regular expressions to process all that. I'll add a comma. Okay, and then we're done with the print statement. Cool. So now we're done testing for event handling, and now we want to actually want to get back to our while loop. In uh, this this indentation, we'll fill the window with white. Keep the the background just just fine in the, in the same. If we are drawing, if the draw start box is true, we don't need to have that because that's the way that Python works. If we just test for if, that's when we'll start to draw. Rect window. Let's draw it red. Pi game dot mm, rect position. Mouse position zero and mouse position one. Now we do this because okay, we're drawing the rect from the start and then up until we're we're keep we're keeping moving the mouse, so we keep having that one be variable. And that sort of thing. In fact, let's do mouse position minus position one because remember we want the width and the height. And do the same for the other variable. Okay, that's good. And now we can test. Okay, what about the things that we've actually released and the things that we've actually kept? <laughs> we do that for with a for loop for item in to draw. We will go ahead and draw pi game dot draw dot rect. I'll scroll down here so you can see this a little bit better. Window. Let's actually keep this black instead, and then we'll draw that item. Because we're adding that rect to the to the to the thing, you know. <laughs> okay, that's pretty simple. Actually, let's add another re uh, button that will allow us to remove things from to draw. If event, oh, this should be event dot key. Sorry, it's a good thing. If event dot key is equal to pygame return. Otherwise, if event dot key is equal to pi game dot key backspace uh, to draw I think pop will work I think that might need an argument 
Okay, otherwise it's just fine. So all I've got is huge window here. It's all white. I'm moving it around, and it's, you still can't really see too much of a change. But now if I draw... Okay, nothing's going to happen. Never mind. I forgot to update the screen. I'm an idiot. This is when we update. And we'll actually tick. So we can stop my processor from freaking out. Now when we run the program... <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Now when we run the program, we've got this big white mass, and if I draw, okay, a red block, I can keep moving. I'm still holding the mouse button down. Once I release it, it turns black, because now we've got that platform there. And I can keep drawing other things, like, okay, let's draw a, a block here. Let's draw a block here. Maybe one down here. Keep moving the, the screen here. Let's draw one that looks like it's coming from the top here. Right over here. We can make it look like we've got some stairs or something. Right now this is a lot of different blocks, and that's probably pretty bad. It's, it's not going to look all that good. Or at least we know that it's, it's not very efficient. Like, we know that, okay, this is made up, this is pretty choppy, like it's made up of other things that are not really real blocks or whatever. And then I'll put something way down at the bottom that we can just jump to. Okay. So now we've got all that. If I hit the backspace button, that might hopefully... Okay, good. That does remove itself. Uh, the pop function in Python will just remove the last item from a list and return it, I believe. But now we've got this big, big level, right? And if I hit enter, it releases all of the information about this block, or all of the blocks that we've created. So, what if we copied and pasted that into our other code that we have? The one that we were actually, okay, making levels with. What if we had level 1 be filled with this stuff? Bam, copied and pasted that right in here. And, okay, hopefully the player will be at a good position when we run this code. Let's, let's check it out. Let's try it. If I run the program, okay, no, invalid, invalid thing. Right, 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 right. This is where we have to get into normalizing our objects, or our platforms, because what if the width is less than the x value, or, or some absurd, strange thing? Uh, we'll have to test for that in the upcoming tutorial. See this negative value? WTF is that? We can have a negative width. <laughs> for now, I'll show you that, okay, we've got all this that we can use, and, um... This this very primitive world editor that we just created all of this um this this code with. Okay, good. I don't. I closed it. I copied and pasted all of these dimensions, and I'm sure you did the same for on your end. Now let's see if we can actually get these to work in our in our game engine and code that we initially wrote. I'll do that in the next tutorial. But for now, we've got this funky little world editor that we can use somewhat. It's not, as, it's not as pristine, it's not as elegant as we would like, but we'll keep modifying it as we go along. For now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this. hope you understood everything that we kind of did, and uh, I'm sure you see the code in motion when it's actually running the program. Thanks again. Talk to you later.